Today we're going to look at configuring RAD Menu to fit your application's needs. RAD Menu is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. In this video we will demonstrate how to set various properties of RAD Menu for Silverlight WPF. We will look at changing the orientation to various click modes and even talk about opening and closing delays of RAD Menu. Let's go ahead and jump straight into Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010 and we're working with the same project that we worked with in the first part of the series. So just as a quick recap, the references that was needed to use the RAD menu control was Telerik.windows.controls and Telerik.windows.controls.navigation. We created a RAD menu by using our Telerik XML namespace which is defined here and we added Telerik RAD menu and then we just set the vertical to top and then we set a RAD menu item and then another RAD menu item and in this instance we added a click event and we also added an icon so when we run this application it looks just like this. Now this is just the default style and of course you can change this if you want but underneath the file you can see the drop down of new tab, new window, open and save and if we clicked on new tab of course you could see the event handler that would fire. We added a separator and we also showed nested menu items. Let's go ahead and jump back into Visual Studio and let's talk about some more properties of the control. So the first property that I want to talk about is actually the orientation. So um, right out of the box, the orientation is set to a horizontal, as you can see in the designer window. What I'd like to do is go ahead and I'd like to change that to a vertical orientation. We can do that pretty easily by coming back into our RAD menu, and we can set the horizontal alignment here to a left and then we can set the orientation of the control to vertical. So as you can see in the designer it's already moved it. But let's go ahead and let's run it and see what it looks like inside of the browser. And from here we can see our new vertical RAD menu. So we click on file and of course our menu items appear and then edit our nested copy appears. So let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about click modes. So by default, if an item in the RAD menu control is clicked, the menu will get closed. You can actually change this behavior by setting the stays open on click property of the RAD menu item. So for example, if we scroll down just a tad here, we could add that to our copy menu item by just changing stays open on click and setting that to true. Now by default that is set to a false. So you may find this functionality very useful when you're having checkable menu items in your RAD menu. So the next feature to talk about is the different types of opening modes. So there are two opening modes that the RAD menu recognizes. When the child items are shown when the mouse is over the parent or the child items are shown when the user clicks on the parent. The behavior of the RAD menu control can be controlled via the click to open property. The default is false, which means that the child items are displayed upon a hover action. If you wanted to change that to a click, you could come back to say the RAD menu and type in click to open and set that to a true. And if we decided to run our application, then as you can see when we hover over these items, nothing happens. But if I actually click one time, then our menu will appear. Going back to our application, we can also change the opening and closing delays. So underneath our click to open, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this to set that property back to false and I'm going to add in my show delay 
and we'll just use 0, 0, 1 and we'll also add in a hide delay and set that to the same thing. So note that when the click to open property is set to true, the delays don't affect the RAD menu's behavior. So this sample that we just added in, this is basically a delay for one second before closing a menu and another second before hiding that menu. And also sometimes you may need menu items to be checkable. So we could scroll back down here and inside of copy, we'll just go ahead and remove the code that we added earlier and we'll just add is checkable. We'll set that to true and underneath cut, we'll also add that is checkable and set that to true. We'll go ahead and run our application and you can see that underneath edit, I could place a check here, uncopy, and then I could also place a check under cut. Again, thank you for watching. Please tune in to tv.teleric.com for more videos and check out blogs.teleric.com for the latest news and announcements.